The only way that you will be set free is by feeling pain. Hi everyone, my name is Roshni, this is Beti Grub, and welcome back to my channel. If we're in the process of healing, a lot of the ways that we describe our behavior before is about, you know, escapism or fantasy or the idea of running away or, you know, using drugs or drinking in order to kind of escape or to feel like our problems are uh, kind of melting away, even if it's only for the time being or even if we're creating bigger problems instead. Um, you know, there's lots of ideas of being in denial and not really feeling like you are ex stepping up to the plate and accepting all the responsibilities that are in front of you. You know, you, you want to run away. You want to be in a different world. You want to, you know, use so that even if you can't physically escape or run away, you are mentally in a completely different place. And, you know, I was... In my own journey, you know, that was a huge part of it for me. And even when I was graduating college, I was so dead set on traveling. I didn't want to find a job. I didn't want to do any of that. And, you know, obviously that's not what I, I did end up finding a job and I did end up, you know, kind of settling into a life and all of that. And I didn't, um, you know, immediately just leave. And in the few months that I was here and that I was kind of settled down, I realized that a big reason why I wanted to leave was just because I wanted to escape. I didn't actually want to graduate and be in the real world and do all these things. I wanted to kind of drag on this fantasy life as much as I possibly could, even though I knew I would just be putting off the idea of actually building my life and that at some point I would have to do that anyway. And, you know, with other things that I've done in my past, I've definitely kind of always been trying to escape or always been trying to find something different and never fully being settled in the life that I had or, you know, accepting the life around me. I was always kind of in denial of something or running away from something and I realized that, you know, no matter what we're trying to escape, you cannot heal until you feel the pain. And the thing is, we wouldn't be trying to escape something if something bad didn't happen. But when it comes down to people that develop, you know, really bad addictions or that are constantly trying to escape in one way or another or spending all of their money or just making these reckless decisions, a lot of that comes from some sort of trauma, right? Whether it happens in childhood or whether the trauma happens in adulthood, there's usually something that happens that triggers you wanting to run away. So when a trauma occurs, you know, it's obviously something really bad, something shocking, something that you never really even saw coming or something that you thought, you know, you've heard of it happening, but it would never happen to you. You know, there's so much that could happen in so many different forms of trauma. But if you aren't able to deal with it at the time, you know, or if you're never able to give yourself the time to deal with it in a healthy way or to take time to deal with it, because life is life and life goes on and life doesn't always wait for us to deal with traumatic events, right? So a lot of us just have to pick ourselves up and go and move on and do the best we can. And when that happens and when we're pushing all of these feelings down and not letting ourselves feel any of our emotions or feel the fear or the anger or whatever it is about what happened to us, we look for other ways to deal with that. So we're, you know, jumping into addictions or we're, like I said, spending all of our money. We're making reckless decisions. We're running away from people that love us. We're pushing people away. You know, we're doing all these things that we know aren't good for us that are sabotaging ourselves, but it's because we're running away from these feelings. And something that I really wanted to say and share with you is that you have got to feel the pain. That pain is what's going to get you through the next level and what we're all running away from, because we can all resonate with the idea of running away or escapism, right? That's a lot of what media is for us. Sometimes we zone out and just watch, you know, three seasons of a show on Netflix just so we don't have to think about our life and in the same way in media a lot of the stuff we are watching are you know movies about people escaping or people leaving living these fantasy lives or reality shows about you know these lives that we could never even imagine and you know we're looking for this everywhere we go and everywhere we go and everywhere we look people are looking for ways to escape right but it's like do we ever really think about what we're running from what are we escaping from and what we're escaping from is feeling these terrible feelings the acceptance of the trauma that happen to you, you know, and you don't want to think about that. And I've been, you know, traumatized in many different ways, many different times in my life. And I really can't even say now that I'm perfectly healed, but I would say that a big part of my healing did occur when I was able to just absolutely break down 
Um, and you know, I didn't, I didn't see that breakdown coming anyway. I, I didn't see it coming. I didn't plan it, but I finally was able to really just feel these emotions that I'd been kept, kept pent up inside of me for years, for like my entire life. And, um, you know, so I can tell you a little bit about this story. I had just graduated college. Um, it had been about a year later. I was working at my school as well, and I decided to start, uh, therapy again. So I went to a therapist and, you know, we were talking about my family and just kind of these basic things and I was just like crying and I almost never cried in therapy I'd only cried once before in a in a therapist's office and um you know I I didn't expect all of these feelings to just kind of come out but so much happened and after you know the therapist session I you know ran to the bathroom in her office um and you know, in like the lobby of the office and I was crying and I, you know, had plans to go to work after that, but I called off the rest of work and I just went home because I couldn't think, I couldn't function. And the second I got home, I just collapsed on the kitchen floor and I just cried for like, I don't even know, it could have been four hours, six hours. Like I just laid there and I was sobbing and I couldn't move and I couldn't process what was happening to me. I couldn't think about what was going on, but it was such a release of all these emotions. And the thing is, I didn't need to sit there and mentally process every feeling. I just needed to release it. I just needed to let it out and I needed to feel it. And I realized in that moment and in, you know, the days and weeks after that, that there had been such a weight lifted off my shoulders. And again, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm fixed after this or I'm completely healed or that, you know, all of my problems are gone or, you know, I'm I'm a perfect person now, by no means is that what I'm saying, but, you know, it made a significant difference to be able to feel that, and for so long inside of me, there was just always a restlessness, and an anger, and a desire to want to drink, or to want to use, or to do all these other things, because of this, like, feeling inside of me that I just could not, I couldn't sit still with myself, you know, and I felt so restless, but it, it was because there was all this stuff bubbling up inside of me that I had been running away from, or pushing down, or pushing away, or trying to ignore my entire life. So when I finally had the ability to just let it all out and not process it and not think about anything, but just, you know, feel this emotion and this release, it gave me such a clarity of mind after that happened. And again, it's, it wasn't something I planned. It's not something that I made happen, but I was taught such an important lesson from that moment on. And that was that, you know, when something horrible happens, you have got to address those feelings and you've got to just feel them. And if that looks like, you know, just staying in bed all day and just being like, this sucks, I hate this, but, you know, just allowing yourself to turn your mind off, but not pushing something away, you know, there is a difference, and sometimes you need time to just cry, or sometimes you need time to just be angry, but you have to find a way to deal with that instead of just running away because the thing is no matter how far you run you're not out running the feeling you're not out running what happened to you it's your past and it's something that happened and you can't just escape from those things and from those feelings forever and facing it and accepting the those things happen to you doesn't make it okay and that's my next point is that a big part of this healing and these emotions that I'm talking about in the following weeks after I had that huge meltdown, you know, only in the few weeks after that was I able to actually think about what happened and think about what I was feeling. Again, I didn't really know what I was feeling up until after it all happened. You know what I mean? I had to go back and kind of dissect it. And in those weeks after, I realized that part of what I was holding off on wanting to feel And some of the feelings that I was running away from was the idea that those things happened to me and the idea that someone let those things happen to me and just kind of the idea that the people in my life or people that had wronged me weren't perfect, you know? And I don't know, it kind of sounds crazy and it's hard to explain, but you don't want to believe that other people are so bad that they could do bad things to you and um, sometimes you love these people and you know them and sometimes they're strangers but either way you don't want to believe that other humans are so bad that they could hurt you in that way and part of that is accepting that you know people wronged you people really screwed you up people did something to you because of how messed up they are and you know that's that's not okay um and facing it and and accepting that that happened to you and that's part of your story will never make it okay and forgiving 
something that happened to you or forgiving the person that did something to you doesn't mean that you are condoning that behavior. It doesn't mean that you are, you know, allowing that behavior. It doesn't mean that you're weak. It doesn't mean that you are saying that, you know, they can get away with it or that it's okay even that what they did, like, you're not ever saying that, you know, even if you forgive someone 30 years later, you're not telling them that that was okay what they did to you. You're just saying that I'm not going to let what you did and this certain experience hold me back any longer. It's for you. It's not for them. And you can forgive something that happened to you or you can accept something that happened to you without forgiving that person. And that's a choice that you have to make. You know, that's something that you can talk to other people in your life that you trust about. You can talk to a therapist about about whether you want to forgive that person. And that ultimately is, you know, your decision. It just means that you are willing to set yourself free from the emotions and from the experience that has been holding you back for so long whatever you've been through you have to just feel the pain feel the guilt feel the grieving process of you know losing your childhood or losing a time in your life that was important to you you know whatever your trauma was it took something away from you whether it was your innocence or you know whether it was your idea of what parents should be or your, your idea of what family is or your idea of what trusting someone should be. There's so many things that trauma and these negative experiences can take away from you and that's really not fair. But, you know, it's important to not give it the power to take away your whole life. You're still a person outside of your trauma. You're still a person outside of your addiction and you're still a person outside of the coping mechanisms that you use for your trauma whatever you need to do so that you can kind of set yourself up in a in a facility or in a place or an environment that's that you trust so that you can feel these feelings and I think that's the most important thing you know make sure that you do have at least a few people around you that you trust and it doesn't have to be in that exact moment but that you can call up or that you can you know, go to their house or have them come over, Um, make sure you have a few people, make sure that the environment that you're in um, for the time being is something that you can really lean on and depend on and use to explore your emotions. Um, But no matter what, no matter how far you're running, you're never going to be able to outrun your past. And it's exhausting to even try and it's hard to feel so restless and to feel so much pain inside. It's hard to be able to not just sit still and and feel peaceful. I didn't even know what the feeling of internal peace was like for like the first 22 years of my life. You know what I mean? Like I never felt that feeling of peace until um, later and until this kind of journey all began. So I just want you to know that if even if you felt horrible your entire life there's still hope out there and there's still ways for you to deal with this and there's still a life and a future ahead of you with this so I know that this was kind of a heavy video and um, I just feel really passionate about this like you like the only way that you're going to be set free is if you feel the pain the only way that you're going to be able to grow as a person is if you feel the pain and I know that that's so frustrating but again that's more motivation for you to stay on the right track because when you really look the pain that you felt in the face and you think how disgusting is it of another person to put me through that and to put for one person to put another person through that and all of those feelings and all of that grieving you it's more motivation for you to never mess up in that way it's more motivation for you to stay on the right path and say you know what maybe I came from this cycle of abuse but it's gonna end with me maybe I came from you know just this idea of a horrible toxic relationship being the right way to live your life and everyone in your you know, early years reflected that kind of relationship, but it can still end with you, you know, and realizing and facing these things and talking about how horrible they are and finding places where you trust people and trust your environment enough to express how you feel about how bad these things are, that gives you more motivation to, to not repeat those same mistakes and to say, you know what, all these actions and all these behaviors are serious. It's not just a joke and it's not just 
something that you can do lightly or take lightly like all these experiences do have an effect on people and so now that I have felt how much I can be affected by someone else's actions I know how to not repeat those feelings and I know how to not repeat those actions so that other people aren't affected by all these things that happened to me the same way that I was there's such a good kind of pattern and ripple effect there in you know taking that time to think about what happened to you and and forgive yourself and feel bad for yourself and it's okay sometimes to pity yourself for everything that happened to you but then that is something that you have to move forward from you know you can't get stuck in these feelings but allowing you to feel them will kind of bring you to this next level so that you can live your life again and enjoy your life in a way that almost as if all of these things didn't happen to you you know what I mean Um, and nothing can ever take them away and I'm not saying that that's possible but it is possible to start over and it is possible to kind of change your emotional map so that not everything is centered around these traumas that you went through you know Um, so I really wanted to share that message today if you have any questions of course let me know in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up it really really helps don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well and join the family And otherwise, I will see you all next week. I love you all so much. Happy healing.